Hey everybody, Cat here, and welcome to the first episode of working on my 1962 Thunderbird. I had a lot of requests from Facebook to show how I installed seatbelts in the Thunderbird. And we're going to go through that step by step. Well, it won't be as detailed as maybe some would make. Uh, these are not period correct seatbelts, but for the front seats, they will be in the correct location for the option that was available back in 1962. The rear seatbelts, I found uh, pinpoints that were... I don't know if they were made for them as an option, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. The front seat belts will be lap belts that were the option back in 1962, and the rear seat belts will be a three-point seat belt. Uh, maybe period correct, but definitely was not an option back in 1962 for Thunderbird. Well, let's go ahead and go inside, take a look. All right, everybody, uh, what we have here, uh, the front seat belts, which is the lap belt. These are 74 inch long lap belts. They're the aircraft style. Uh, they appear to be, you know, what you might find in a car back in the 60s. They are longer than the factory option that was available. I think these are 74 inches long. I'll have to get the exact number in a second here. But uh, I do know they're longer, so they kind of hang over real far. Uh, they do make retractors that you can put on both sides that will pull it down. Uh, and clips you can do to lock them down. I did not do that yet. Uh, to me, it, it, again, I'm not going to factory. Uh, period correct or factory correct for the car is just something that looks good and nice and to the untrained eye looks looks perfect looks good enough uh, let's take a look at the rear so again you can see that the rear seats here the three point I did place them behind the driver the the behind the back seat again and they're placed down low in two positions now they the to me appear to be a little tight but I'm not going to be sitting back there and they're just you know they're there for added safety uh, compared to what the car didn't have well I can't show you much more without taking the car apart so let's go ahead and go back in time to when there were no seatbelts let's take a look at the car with everything out so I went ahead and I took out the front seat just to make it easier to show you what you'll be looking at uh, for your seatbelt locations which are located directly behind the front seat so let's go ahead and take a look and see what we're looking at so with the front seat out, you should see something like this, carpet and whatnot down here. Below, pull up the carpet, we, will be the base of the car. Now your car will probably, if it's not been touched, have tar matting. And you can see the remnants of the tar mat down here. Uh, and I went ahead with this and just pulled it all up, what was there, in order to expose my seatbelt locations. Now. The first seatbelt location you're going to see right here, this is a little rubber stopper you're going to find. You kind of see it's rounded here. Mine actually had some sort of damage underneath the car, so that's why it's bent up a little bit. But this little guy is just a rubber stopper, and you just pull him out, and there is going to be a nut and a bolt. Uh, there's a nut and a plate down there for you to thread into. The other one, which you can see I made a cut here for the seatbelt since I've already installed them, is located right here and you can see a clear indication that there is a retaining plate underneath uh, for a seat belt and that's what you're uh, when you are looking to install you want to see that there's an extra thick piece of metal underneath this location so we're gonna take these out hopefully everything is good and threaded in there the rubber looked good when I pulled it out just like this you can see it's not rusty so I'm I was guessing that uh, I had a good uh, threads if you don't have good threads you can always drill it out and then bolt out from underneath which actually isn't a bad idea, and I did that anyway, I just bolted it. But my threads were good, so I threaded right in. Alright, now that we found the front seat belt uh, locations here and located under here, let's go ahead and take the back seat out and uh, look to see where I installed my rear seat belts. I went ahead and I pulled the back seat out of the car. Let's take a look down and, and find what we're going to, well, look at what we're going to find. So, in this location, the underneath the back seat, you're gonna find matting such as this. You see this matting right here? It's gonna be coating this whole back. Uh, what I had to do, and actually what I wanted to do originally was just pull it off to find out any rust I had, if I had any holes or anything back here, which I do not, it seems pretty solid. When you pull off the back and you pull off this matting, the soundproofing, you're gonna find two dimple spots. One here and one here. Now I've already drilled these out because I've installed my seat belts, but I use these locations where they were dimpled in, they were not welds. As you can see, this is like a weld or a tack uh, spot weld location. It was not that. This was actual a dimple pressed into the metal, which I was able to find on the other side underneath the car. So I used these two spots to put my lap belts in. 
And then for my third place, which really is not, I mean, this is a thick place. This, I use my third seatbelt harness point up here. This hole is already pre-made. I just had to maybe, wide. I don't even think I've widened it. It just fit the bolt perfectly. And my hand fit back there. Uh, this is not a real structural place. You can see even there's some flex that's gone on and push it out. So this for uh, the three-point harness, which wasn't even available back then, uh, again, this is not a structural location. It's really the lap belt down here at these two locations, which are going to be saving your life. So uh, once you drill these out, you can use a unit bit or whatever size bit fits for your bolts. Uh, you can let it bolt up and then put your back seats back on. Now, since we've uh, taken a look at all these three points and the front seats, let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware you'd be getting, at least what hardware you might be getting. Now that we've gone over the locations for the seat belts in the front and the rear, the hardware, which we have right here based on the, the trunk, which needs to be redone eventually, you're going to get, uh, if it was a factory option for MoCo seat belt hardware for the front, it should be like a carbine clip that clips on over a uh, eyelet. I did not go with that. I went with something a little more modern. So my seatbelts came with the option to have the hardware with it. So the hardware you want to look for is a grade 8 bolt, I believe this is. And you can normally tell by the color. You can see how it's got this like zinc plating on it. And also it's a fine tooth thread. So these are the two key things you want to look for. And that comes with this large plate. This large plate is made to spread out the force when there's an impact so it, it allows the frame and the body to you know, bend and not pull your bolt through your car. Again, you'll have you know a, another bolt, nut, uh, lock washer, regular washer, and then a fender washer. And that's uh, those are the th four things you would definitely need if you're going to be purchasing yourself uh, for hardware. Let's go ahead and get the seat belts installed and we'll show you from underneath the car and inside the car what it looks like. All right, well, I went ahead and replaced the uh, seat belts, put the seat belts back in the car. Let's take a look here at the front. So as you can see here, I bolted it in straight through, threaded it, and I had to cut the carpet. Now, I, I cut a little bit extra of this padding out just for the nut and everything, the nut and bolt to all go through. And then I had to cut the carpet, of course. Uh, you know, up to you how you want to cut the carpets. You may want to just put a hole in your carpet and everything right on top. Mine did not come with any sort of plastic that covered up the metal, so I went underneath. Again, I'm not going factory correct. Uh, I'm just going, you know, trying to make something that, that works. Again, in the rear, you can see here how I cut. I had to cut out of the center pump carpet, and I just kind of just lay it on top. That's how I just end up leaving it. In the back of the car, let's go and get back in here. Let's take a look. So both places, I have everything ready to go in. I'm going to need a second hand to bolt these down. Uh, for here and here, I do have the larger uh, fender washers underneath for structural and strength. Up here in the corners, like I said, these two guys, which are installed into just some thin metal, the actual fender washer doesn't fit. So again, it's nice to have the shoulder straps, the third point, but again, uh, it, it really is just just there for you for for anyone that wants to you know just feel a little extra safe it, it doesn't add any as far as safety i feel let's go ahead and take a look underneath the car and we can show you what i can show you what it looks like when you're installing and we are laying directly underneath the front passenger seat looking towards the rear of the car at the first plate and that plate is made for a seatbelt. um again you can see how big it is it's like a big fender washer welded in the bottom of the car I went ahead and placed a lock washer and nut underneath just to add extra security to it. It really shouldn't be necessary once you tighten that nut all the way down from inside the car. Let's go to the other side and you can see where the interior one is for the passenger side. Again, this duplicates on the driver's side. That's why I haven't shown anything there. But uh, you can see the plate again and it is on the angle right towards the hump. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rear of the car now and let's take a see how that one looks when you install it well now we're under the rear of the car we're actually sitting right about where the gas tank should be and you can see i've taken my fender washer lock nut and nut and put it on the bolt and that's for the interior next to the hump and then let's go ahead to the other side and you can see the other one right over here at the exterior side of the passenger side underneath the rear seat now one thing you'll notice is just how tight this is to the wall, so you can see there's not much more room 
I could go to the structural member to put it in anyway. Uh, I, I do know that the seatbelt instructions that came with these seatbelts said 15 inches apart. I think this, between this nut and this nut over here is about 12 inches. I probably could have gone a little further in on this, but you know, those dimple spots looked pretty good. And I went ahead, went with those dimple spots and it, it turned out, look at the draw, that's, I don't know if that was a reason for those dimple spots, but I mean, they're pretty good. Uh, again, the fender washer, you definitely need that lock nut, the locking washer lock and then and the nut itself and then the bolt. So that's uh, looking at the rear of the car and I can show you the driver's side right there. Same thing, uh, installed, very dirty car. Yeah. It's a very old car. Now that I've installed the back, the front seat belts and the back seat belts in the car, there is one last thing you have to do for the back seat belts. Because I installed the three point harness in the back, I actually have to modify the rear seat. So let's take a look here. What I ended up doing was I, I used a grinding tool, cutting tool, and I cut out just about two inches, the, the width of the seat belt itself from the frame and structure of the uh, the back seat. Now it doesn't really, everything kind of locks in so it doesn't affect what you see inside the car. If we take a look at the other side, I did the same thing here. You can kind of see I cut it uh, and cut out the actual frame. Now if you're not into modifying the car, I would say in the back just do the lap belts. Uh, you may find some other place where you structurally want to attach the seat belts either on top of the back frame behind the rear window the the uh, the back panel behind the rear window uh, I wanted to hide it kind of make it look as as modern as possible in there uh, or as factory I guess you could say but uh, it was hidden where I put it and it's not a structural location and you have to modify the back seat itself so that may not be an option for some uh, it's something I did not for everybody, but I want to at least give you that last bit of information here because uh, putting that that third point in, you do have to do that. This is the only modification you, you do have to do. Well, that's the procedure that I took to install the seat belts there uh, in the car. There's a couple of things you have to remove as far as the tar matting, soundproofing that's in the car. Uh, a couple, two spots you have to drill out. One spot in the rear that uh, really is not necessary if you're going to go with three-point harness. I would probably, if you want to do factory or period correct as much as possible, go with a two-point lap belt in the back. Again, the front is a lap belt. I don't know of any place to attach structurally a third-point harness anywhere in the car for any seatbelt location. Uh, if you like the information I get in here, again, this is not like a professional install or anything, but if you want to see other builds, I will be doing next the uh, gearbox since that thing is leaking everywhere uh, and I can't really drive the car until I get the gearbox uh, sealed back up so I bought a gasket kit for that and I'll be removing that out of the car next and, and fixing that the other thing which I'll be doing next as well at some point is fixing the gas tank I've got a pinhole in it so I've got to clean that off and do that next as well but if there's any other information uh, keep on the channel hopefully I'll be posting more videos I don't know how much time I have but when I do a, a build I'll post it here uh, like and subscribe Keep on driving. See ya.